On today's show, backflipping politicians, Australia moves one step closer to 100% renewable power, and China borrows from Tesla swappable battery packs. And I put myself in situations standing on my own. They say that you love a comfort. G'day, my name is Chris, and this is your show about everything happening in the space of renewable technologies such as EVs, battery, solar, and wind, both in Australia and well from around the world. If you're new, consider subscribing. It really does support the channel. Or if you want to go the next step up, join these guys over here on Patreon, who for as little as a coffee per month, get early access, exclusive content, polls, news, and more things you just don't see here. And um, a big shout out to my producer level patrons, and that is Angelo, Ashley Hill, Ray Johnson, and Tessa Nagong. And this episode is still sponsored by Tessa Taxi, who have got Teslas that you can try out in Queensland, New South Wales, ACT, Victoria, and South Australia. Use my referral code down below to save yourself a little bit of money. And yeah, let's get into the news. How cool would it be if you could charge your battery in three minutes? Sounds unreal? Well, Chinese government is actively supporting a standardized practice of battery swapping. Yes, battery swapping for your EV. Now, this isn't new. Tesla demonstrated the proof of concept about six years ago where they put a Model S side by side against an Audi and one was filling up at a petrol station and well, they did two battery swaps for the Tesla Model S in the same time it took the Audi to refuel. But unlike Tesla who are yet to actually deploy this system, um, the Bayek Blue Park New Energy Technology Group, my gosh, try something that quickly, is already doing it at one of the 187 battery swap stations in 15 Chinese cities. Now, the system takes about three minutes per car to uh, change it out, and it's designed primarily, well, it's, it's actually designed for the fleet of 16,000 electric taxis. Curiously, the Chinese government has legislated that the purchase of EVs in China, they can actually separate the EV from the battery and well, vice versa. Impressive? I don't know. Share your thoughts and put them down below. Staying with China for a moment, Fiat Chrysler announced on the 17th of January that it will potentially partner with iPhone assembler Foxconn to build electric cars and develop the internet connected vehicles for China. Hmm, now what does that mean? Like the internet of vehicles? Really? Like, do, do we need that? Curious. Time and again, I might report on how legacy car makers are struggling to transition to electric vehicles. And well, thankfully, recent musings by VW's CEO on whether or not they'll be able to get there as soon as they possibly can, or they'll actually end up being like Nokia. Yeah. In a statement, Herbert Diaz, who's again, I'm probably butchering your name, told VW's senior managers following like a global board meeting on Thursday that if they continue at their current speed, it's going to be very, very tough. Now, this is a bit where I should insert like, just like yes. but no, no, today I won't because, well, I can, I'll contrast this assessment by VW with Subaru who are firmly in the slow lane to Kodak land. Yeah, Kodak, remember that company? Mm. Well, they announced, this, this is Subaru by the way, that by 2030, only 40% of their cars will be some type of electric vehicle and strongly mentioned mild hybrids. For those who know, Subaru is basically synonymous with Toyota and that's Toyota was synonymous with I think Mitsubishi or some other type of manufacturer who's got vested interest in keeping internal combustion engine cars going for as long as they possibly can. If you ask me, the way emission standards are going right now is pushing car makers to get basically their car fleets to be 100% renewable before the end of this decade. You know, I'm gonna go on record and say that, but essentially, I challenge anyone in the year 2030 to buy an internal combustion engine without maybe some sort of special permit. Yeah, it'd be like an antique, hopefully very expensive, like EVs are now. Ha <laughs> ha, flip side. How would you feel if I told you that for every search you do on the web, a company will plant a tree for you for free? Sounds too good to be true? Well, actually it isn't. 
I looked into Ecosia recently. They're like a company who use more than 40% of their ad revenue, that's the profit stuff, to plant trees. Now, these guys, they're actually a non-profit, so before you ask, the remaining amount of like income they get from advertisers goes to paying staff, service, running costs and the like, okay? Now, this service isn't new, but the reason I'm bringing it up is because, well, Microsoft, that's the company who actually run Bing, and who are actually behind Ecosia, they've announced that they're gonna be running on 100% renewable power to get to, rather, be carbon negative. Carbon negative. It's gonna be a term you're gonna hear a lot more in the show, I hope. So, Brad Smith, Brad Smith, president of Microsoft, has said that by 2030, Microsoft will be carbon negative, and that by 2050, they will have removed from the environment all the carbon that the company has emitted since it was founded in 1975. Well done, Microsoft. Seriously, good on you. Now, not only will they be offsetting the energy requirements for clean green power, but also, once they get past 2050, they're gonna start absorbing CO2 from other polluters. So, fantastic work, and I applaud the, what they're doing here, and yeah. Do you know another company that's gonna be carbon negative? Okay, time for one of my favorite segments, mail time. And well, from the last news show that I did two weeks ago, I uh, got this comment from KenZ300, who said, wouldn't solar energy a safer, cleaner, and cheaper than coal and nuclear energy? Remember Fukushima and Chernobyl? The cost of storing nuclear waste will go on forever. Coal is cooking the planet. Seems like an easy choice if people were making decisions based on science and logic. Looks like fossil fuels greed and selfishness are blocking progress. Want cheaper electricity bills? Go solar. Time to dump climate deniers and support climate leaders. People need to speak up. Couldn't agree more with you, mate. And uh, yeah, stay tuned because at the end of this show, I've got a little bonus for, well, you, but for all my viewers out there. Again, same with the news from two weeks ago. Um, now, I'm gonna mispronounce this. Al Rukif Tav. Yeah, so sorry, I really am. Anyway, you said that. The problem with hydrogen is that it's not economical to source it from water. It's currently sourced from natural gas, which is a greenhouse gas and produces CO2, another greenhouse gas, in order to produce hydrogen. Yep, absolutely. And uh, yeah, let's just not not do the whole hydrogen thing, please. I was covered it before, so go look for that. All right, one little, little news um, piece from this last week, and this comes from Charles A. Rivera, who said that the S-Pod is great for handicapped people. Now, the S-Pod, by the way, is um, uh, Segway's idea of a self-balancing two-wheel armchair type of thing. And it was demonstrated at 2020 CES. And last episode, I said, can we please not do this? But, well, this uh, thoughtful viewer said that, well, hey, <laughs> do we need this two-wheel balancing chair? Yes, we do. Because, well, people who are in wheelchairs will need it. So, yeah, thank you. Definitely corrected. Apologies. <laughs> and uh, um, But... Can we just all agree that if you are ambulant and you can actually, you know, get around, don't, don't go buy one of these. I think it's just, you know, one step closer to uh, Wally. <sighs> Moving on. He went on to say that putting an internal combustion engine into a Tesla Model 3 to give it a bit more range, this is a mighty step backwards. A company does the unthinkable and unconscionable to the detriment of everyone while benefiting, benefiting no one. Somebody takes range anxiety to paranoid heights, like some nose candy addict coming down off a cocaine binge, when taking a hit off a joint would have worked out much better for everybody. And uh, yeah, look, I've had a few different comments come my way around um, that Tesla Model 3 that they put the internal combustion engine into, that downgraded its battery pack so that it was lighter, and essentially it's just a range extender. Um, and yeah, I don't like this at all. But being in Australia, we have some viewers who actually um, live far away from any charging infrastructure like we're talking thousands of kilometers. And well, this is maybe one way to do that. But conversely, I vaguely recall uh, Rich Rebuilds who featured like James uh, Clifford, 
who actually had like a 84 kilowatt hour range extending battery trailer that he procured from a Tesla Model S. And um, yeah, the idea of that is, is that it's a really flat bed sort of trailer device. It's right in parallel to the other battery packs. So the Tesla thinks it's got a massive, massive battery. And yeah, you know, it's, it follows behind the car very nicely. So the wind is not getting uh, diffused and upset and it actually works really, really well. Um, I'd like to just see the energy density of batteries improve instead of us continuing down this route of using fossil fuels. That's all. Okay, one last little bit of mail, and this actually comes from Ashley Hill, who I did the accessory Tesla Model 3 video with just a few days ago. And in it, Ash says that, we now use a old suction cup foam mount to remove the inner bits, and it only takes a few seconds. Video soon. And the roof shades have no real effect apart from us missing looking at the sky. So no longer recommended. Thanks Ash, good to know. And hey guys, look, um, do check out Ash's channel. He's just starting out and he's got a few videos on there and he's growing and uh, yeah, do support him, subscribe. All right, let's get into our next news story. On Friday the 24th of January, Australian Energy Regulator approved a Regulatory Investment Test Transmission or RITT clearing the way for a $1.5 billion 900 kilometer transmission line between Robertstown, South Australia and Wagga Wagga in New South Wales. In a joint project by Electron and Transgrid, this project will mean that South Australia will be able to achieve 100% renewable power before 2030 and shore up supplies in New South Wales by creating what they're calling a loop network. That is to say that if one of these interconnectors should go down, as had happened very famously in some storms a few years ago, they would then have an alternative route to get power between either Victoria and South Australia or South Australia and New South Wales. Hey Scott Morrison, that will keep the lights on. Yeah. The significance of this project is that since 2015, there has been like very little interconnected development resulting in like wind and solar projects being stranded. That is like they can't connect to the electricity grid. So this will be a long way to helping renewable energy developers get their projects online and will get us to 100% renewable power sooner. Okay, a few more news stories and don't forget to hang around for that little bonus story at the end there, okay? All right, here we go. Prepare to be amazed. A school in Bundaberg, Queensland is about to install 810 kilowatts of solar capacity and 1600 kilowatt hours of Tesla battery packs. Yeah. You heard right. This will be Australia's largest private school solar farm and well dwarf something that which we can all kind of relate to in Australia because well down under most homes have like a 1 to 1 1.5 kilowatt solar system and well this system is like 800 times that size. Yeah and in terms of battery storage the Tesla battery power pack is like 80 times larger than the one I've got in this house. Yeah. This is brilliant. It gives me great delight to say that Angus Taylor has made this episode of Long as I don't break things. Promises. Promises is a segment I like to do about what our politicians are and aren't doing in the space of renewable technology, policy and the like. And well, today, coming at you in two parts is, well, the first bit, <laughs> maybe, wait, wait, I'll just slow down for a second. For my international viewers, I'm going to do a little bit of um, uh, history for you here. It won't bore you, it'll just be like 30 seconds, not even. Ready? All right, so Angus Taylor, he's our federal member for energy and emissions reduction. Remember that, energy and emissions reduction. Mmm, competing interests, yeah. Anywho, now to me, he's like a Neanderthal who alongside Tony Abbott and Scott Morrison used to do everything they could or still do actually, to support fossil fuel industries like coal and gas. Yeah, Scott Morrison's that guy who, who brought the lump of coal into Parliament one day and well, recently approved a massive coal uh, farm and you know, coal power plant and well, it, it's just still bad, just bad. Anyway, sorry. So in 2015, they tried and somewhat successfully demolished the prior government's renewable energy targets and well, more recently, claimed that the Kyoto Protocol for CO2 credits could be used in the Paris Agreement. 
despite the fact there's actually no mention anywhere that countries can actually do that. So yeah, sure, we'll meet our obligations for CO2 reduction by taking credit for something that was striked in the early 1990s. And Angus Taylor famously ran a scare campaign in the 2019 federal elections where the term renewable energy and economy wrecking became synonymous. Yeah. So yes, Angus Taylor, <laughs> our Minister for Emissions Reduction, who also said that if Australia was to run on 50% renewable energy by 2030, it would wreck the economy. <laughs> well, how things have changed. Now Angus Taylor has taken credit for the record number of renewable installations of late and that by 2030, with thanks to him, good on you mate, we'll reach 48% of our energy mix. Seriously, does he think that we're that stupid? We have no memory of his and well his government's actions around climate change? For goodness sake. Alright, ready for your bonus story? Well. No doubt, almost all of the awesome viewers on this uh, channel are interested in getting us to like renewable power, clean our air, and we'll dramatically get to a better future as soon as we possibly can. But unfortunately, there are people out there who either don't believe it is possible, don't believe the science of climate change, or maybe just think that, you know what, we're all doomed anyway. We may as well just all go burn and uh, fry because, well, this is fine. So. What I'm proposing is, to help you and well, and me, I'm going to do a new segment that will not only be in this show, but I'll also publish it separately in a playlist called FYI. Why? Well, what I want you to do is, whenever you see a comment on social media by someone who appears to know nothing about climate change, renewable energy, and more the like, is that what I want you to do is, is put the short version of this FYI below their comment. Now, I'll dress it up to seem like something that supports their stance, okay? But very, very quickly, I'll steer them in the right direction. Yes? What do you think? Let me know below and let's see how this goes. Okay, ready? Here we go. Climate change and the weather. Are these people for real? Previous records of like highs of 45 degrees in have been as far back as like 1939 or like 46.6 .6 degrees in 2009. Surely climate change is bogus, especially when you've got like record low temperatures like of 5.5 degrees in 1885 or like 2.9 degrees on December 2nd, 1969. Or how about it was like back in December 2018, it was nine degrees. So, well, let's talk about that, shall we? You see, weather is the day-to-day -day observations of things like temperature, humidity, precipitation, rain, and well, the like. Okay? Climate, on the other hand, is a long-term average of weather patterns we experience, measured over 30 years or more. So, you see this chart? This is from the Bureau of Meteorology Australia, who for 110 years have been collecting weather data and averaging it by year to show temperatures above and below the norm. Notice how from the 1980s and 1990s, it continues to rise above the zero line. This is the average temperature of Australia. So a hot or cold spell in your neck of the woods, be it like for a day or a week, that isn't climate change. It's just the weather. And in 2019, Australia's mean temperature was 1.52 degrees above average. And at our current rate, we're going to reach 3 degrees above the norm well before 2050, meaning more devastating fires, floods, droughts, economic damage, and loss of lives. So let's get busy and start doing our part to tackle climate change. All right, so there you go. What do you think? Let me know. I would like to uh, yeah, get your thoughts on whether or not this is something that you might actually go post somewhere. Um, I think definitely I've read plenty of times really silly, silly statements such as, um, uh, how can you, solar doesn't keep the lights on at night time. It's like, yeah, okay. So when it's not raining, we don't get water. 
we have reservoirs, we have batteries. Batteries can be water reservoirs that we have pumped hydro, you know, when the sun shines or the wind blows, we pump the water up a hill. And when it's not doing those things, we just let it fall back down again, go through the turbine, generate electricity. You've got um, city sized power batteries thingies coming from Tesla soon, which will power, you know, the likes of San Francisco for, um, you know, days on end. No need to actually complicate things with nuclear or hydrogen or, you know, coal or gas. In, uh, just uh, the misinformation out there is just incredible. So, this is hopefully my way of, you know, helping you guys and, and myself because I'm going to post them whenever I see that stupid sort of stuff as well. And uh, yeah, um, let's try and get the right information out there. Okay. So, if you enjoy the episode, please do subscribe. It does support the channel. Um, you want to support me over on Patreon? Um, go have a look at it over there. Uh, it's like you know, coffee per month. You know, you get the behind-the-scenes content, early access, and more, more. And uh, thanks to Tesla Taxi and sponsoring this episode. And you know what you can do? You're gonna be good, and you're gonna be green, aren't you?